Potter doing some weird shit again and disturbing our education. <laughs> Doesn't he always do weird shit? Yes, and it disturbs our education every year. Well, I mean, like, he scares the animals and the plants. Not sure how he successfully scares the plants, but he scares the plants. Maybe he has a horcrux in his head. Eh, maybe. Every single year. Also, why aren't we ever in contending for House Cup? Everything we, most of the time, anything the other houses would get points for, we don't. Because we're expected to be doing that anyway. Because we're supposed to be the nice house. Ain't that. Yes, yes, Why is the heat gruff to an old Slytherin? Ah, sure seems like he should be. And why are people tripping him with Draco? I mean, have you seen them? Draco is acting from across the frickin' Great Hall. Gryffindor table is over here. Slytherin table is over here. <laughs> and everyone else is stuck in between them. Draco is so dramatic about every single thing Harry does. Everything. Harry might have had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch and Draco will dramatize it. <laughs> oh my god. Chat! The cat's not doing anything, dude. Okay. It is. Literally just standing there, sniffing things. <laughs> what else is there? Well, there's the fact that the uh, fandom almost completely rejected the uh, original creator of their work, of the work. Well, that would make sense for stupid things. Yeah, but it's just uncommon for a fandom to renounce the creator of the thing they are fans of. True. Especially when there is no secondary creator. True. Like, like not the entire fandom. Sometimes single persons will renounce the creator. Yeah. Because they hate how it ends up, but that's like... Or, you know, there'll be entire fandoms who get angry at, you know, the studio or whatnot. Yeah. But they don't renounce their creator. They, uh, continue to be fine with early bits in their piece and you know it's not like the creators are coming out every like few years and being like oh by the way here's this thing that doesn't matter to the story at all and you know should have been implemented or could have been implemented in the way without making it disturbing to, without messing with the story at all but nah I just decided to throw this in afterwards to get my uh, representation points I think that's the same reason uh, politics try to like do uh, a couple of stuff, but the problem is they don't. Ah understand. yes, don't we want the person running for president to dab on TV? That happened once. Uh... Not current running, past running, but that was interesting. Well, the problem is, is even like they. Even... Ah yes, let's have an old lady dab on TV. That will obviously get her the votes. Never mind. Um, but yeah, it's just like, yes, I totally didn't what make a very, very much trick in a whitewashed, uninclusive piece with mainly male characters. It, it, the thing would have renounced if she, if the if the movie allowed it. What do you mean if the movie allowed it? Well, if she allowed it in the movie, because they're just really no. Well, that's a more recent thing, but we've been having trouble before the Fantastic Beast movies, where you know, you know, they could have totally did the thing that Dumbledore was gay, but no, that's not happening in the movies because. It's totally not 2019 where, you know, it's legal in all of America and Europe and Canada to be gay and get married and whatnot. The cat 
is very impressed with your walk. The cat likes me, dude, because I pay attention to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I thought. I have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah. This is going to be mostly bloopers, isn't it? Probably. Oh, we can also go into the, uh... We can go down the rabbit hole of what the fuck is ships. Oh. Oh, we, yeah. Let's go there next. Including what the uh, fuck is cannon ships? Uh, I, I would, I would... Freaking... Okay. Just because you have a female main character and male main characters does not mean they need to hook up. No. Frickin' Ron X. Hermione was fairly forced. Also, frickin' ah, yes, let's ship the main character with his best front friend's younger sister. With a relationship where, um... They don't actually seem to have any affection towards each other other than she had a crush on him, him when she was younger because, you know, he was famous. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. And, like, uh, Ron, uh, look, I, I'm surprised that in, like, Afterthoughts, most fanfictions have her body break up with Ron. I mean... Makes sense. Why would they stay together? Right. They might just be like, okay, romance wasn't our thing. Move on from that. Also, they have continue to be friends while not romancing because it doesn't work out. Also, did you know the author have to make everyone a Weasley by marriage? <laughs> everyone is now a Weasley. Yeah. <laughs> the cat purrs loudly. <laughs> I'm gonna make that a foley sound. For whenever we swear. And, um, honestly, sometimes the fandom did better with chips. Sometimes the fandom didn't. Look, okay, let's not ship Harry Potter with Moni Myrtle. She's dead. And lives in a toilet. Luckily, <laughs> they extremely despise that. Yep, but it's still a ship. Anything we can ship, we will ship. There is... There are some weird frack ships with Dumbledore. Do you know what the second... What my, I've seen a lot is? Rary? Nope. Hmm. Uh, he, um... Harry and Kilborn. Ah, yes. <laughs> Our favorite kind of ship. Main villain ex main protagonist. Sometimes it, you know, the ship works out somewhat better. In cases it builds it. Because Bill is inherently evil. Voldemort's kind of inherently evil. And insane, because he split his soul. Yep. Okay. You know, I, I just realized how much nicer the Harry Potter story is when you're younger. And yeah. you're oblivious to most things. Then again, when I was younger, I missed the prime years of reading Harry Potter because I thought it was too popular. And look where I am now, sitting here in a Hufflepuff robe with like frickin' five different wands. Really? Let's see, I have this one. I have another one. I have my Newt's Commander wand. I have multiple handmade wands. Um, Another one. Welcome to my bucket of wands. Wands. Best bucket of wands. <laughs> because, of course. Um, you need that many wands. Some of these are for more uh, uh, real life magic purposes if I ever actually get into that, but I have a lot of uh, Harry Potter esque wands, including this one, which was one of my first wands. I thought that was your first one. It might have been. I think it was. Right. This was my first wand. Right. And uh, the only problem I really had with it is this gem only unfalls off sometimes. Yeah, that would suck. But I bought this at a vendor at a con. They had a 
large selection of wands in, you know, I did the whole thing that I was drawn to this specific wand. Yeah, basically he liked the color and it looked cool. No, I, I had a weird drawing to this wand in particular. It felt right in my hand and whatnot. Okay, just that. It's just not like. We got this wand. Which? Which, um, I selected a piece of, it was at Wizarding Weekend. One of the stores was had a lathe out front and had a guy on the lathe making wands for people. Of course. So yeah. I selected this piece of wood and got this one made. Right. Um, we have this boy with his uh, a chopstick with some hot glue and paint made at a Harry Potter or something or rather at the library. Yeah, makes sense. Um, here's a Newt Scamander who. Um, Refuses to be glued. Low quality wand uh, snapped when it got when it got caught on the wall while I was like sliding down to sit and so I need to fix this at some point before I go out and do it again. But okay, uh, we got this wand which I got from a uh, local handmade item store when it was going out of business, unfortunately. It was because the owner decided to move on. It wasn't that they were doing bad, but right. Got this wand, which I really liked as well. And then we move on to my handmade wands. We got we got this boy. Most of these are just sticks I found wrapped in string. In fact, that's all of them. But they were sticks I were drawn to for no apparent reason. Ah, yes, best wand and just a little. Little spike. Um, we got this boy. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do anything with this boy, but he is here. And maybe a wand. Possibly a wand. Possibly three wands. Two. Two. We got this boy who was uh, recently freed from his tinfoil prison and rewrapped. Because T tin foil doesn't look as cool as I thought it would. Yeah, really doesn't. And that is my bucket of wands. Because I'm weird. <laughs> Who isn't? Who is? Um. But. Oh. Another weird thing with this. Yeah. Is. It came with a little card saying what type of wood and what core and whatnot it was supposed to have. You think it's just a... It, it's probably just a chopstick covered in... It's a dowel that was put in a pencil sharpener and hot glued. Probably. Most likely. Don't actually know, but most likely. Yeah. But basically all of the, spec the, like, the specifications on this wand were the same as the ones I got on my wand in Pottermore. Oh, okay. That's why you chose it. No. I did not know the spe specifications of this wand when I got it. Okay, so... And I didn't realize that it matched my Pottermore wand until much later, either because I took the Pottermore test after getting this wand. Yeah, I think I took the Pottermore test after getting this wand. So I was still undetermined of what my house was and probably still thought I was a Ravenclaw, so. Yeah. Ah, yes. That's you, Rap? Yeah. The mistaken house identities. Mistaken house identity. The thing that every Harry Potter fan goes through at one point is, I wonder what house I am. Take some quizzes. And, you know, doesn't really get a definitive result. I, in fact, took a buttload of quizzes. I, of course, took Pottermore's as correct because as much as we dislike the author, she's going to be correct about, you know, the attributes of her houses and whatnot. True. She made them. True. But I have the Google Doc of one day I was bored. So I decided to take as many Harry Potter house quizzes as I could find. 
I got some uh, interesting results. So I'll just scroll through all my freaking um, <laughs> all of my scripts. Ah, here it is. So, wow. I counted this up really, really weirdly. So when I was younger, I thought I was a Ravenclaw. So I was very non-fiction oriented, book oriented. It was, yeah, that was the house I got sorted into the least was Ravenclaw. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could never see being that. Well, you know, everyone at my dad's house is, so that's fun being a lone Hufflepuff. I don't know, maybe the dog's a Hufflepuff, but yeah. True Kids Awkward was like, if we were to walk around as a group, we'd be like, here's a bunch of Ravenclaws and a Hufflepuff. Well, yeah, it kind of makes sense for your family. The more you're less. Yeah. You're more at jumping friends. Um, I was almost tied between Slytherin and Gryffindor in second place. Oh, yeah, I thought that makes sense. Um, I think Gryffindor I was sorted into one more time. No, they're tied because I got, you know, one of the tests is what combination of houses would you get when it was Hufflepuff and Slytherin. So those two are tied for second. And then overwhelmingly I'm a Hufflepuff because apparently the main attribute of Hufflepuffs is liking animals. Like, I think that's half, most, half the reason why I'm a Hufflepuff is because I like animals. I mean, <laughs> this cat is ridiculous. I just wake, like, he's sleeping, I pick him up, he's squirming, but he's purring loudly. <laughs> What I even are you, cat? <laughs> but I've always loved animals and plants, so apparently I'm a Hufflepuff. But like a lot of them were like, okay, what class are you looking forward to the most? You said care of magical creatures? You're a Hufflepuff. Really random things. I think one of them is like, make a cake and we'll tell you what Hogwarts house you are. Because BuzzFeed. But an interesting journey to venture on. True. Enough. I was definitely denying I was a Hufflepuff when I was younger. Well, yeah. Here like, I took the Pottermore quiz twice before it's changed to the newer version. It was a very simple version, though, and I was able to figure out what answer to give which. But I took it the first time, honestly. I got Hufflepuff. I was not satisfied with that. Me thinking I was a Ravenclaw. So I took it again and chose all of the answers I thought would lead to Ravenclaw, and they did. For the longest time I was like, nah, I'm a Ravenclaw because I got that on the Pottermore test, completely glossing over the original results. And I'd actually find myself retaking the test on my old channel. Which should not exist. Now it does. The only reason that I'm somewhat embarrassed of it is because there's freaking My Little Pony theories on it. Which so. that was a seventh grader. Yay! Actually, there's still a connection to your channel on here. Yeah. Who is the dragon? Uh, that should be all.